what's going on music producers in this video i wanted to talk about triplet beats or just general beat making where you're using triplet subdivisions now what does that exactly mean so i'm in ableton here uh, whenever you're using something like drum rack triggering midi to make your drum beats you're going to be looking at this piano roll and you can see these little lines in the background showing the subdivisions of you know a quarter note for instance i'm at like 75 77 bpm now if i hit control one i can see even smaller subdivisions it actually goes up to 128 and and if I go and hit control two, you can see those lines in the background get fatter. And that's that's showing that you can go all the way up to, I think, a quarter note. But you'll notice that when I'm at something like regular 16th notes, some of these MIDI notes are not falling on those lines. And that's because they're in triplet mode, which is, you know, splitting up an even amount of time into three hits. So you have triplet 16th, for instance. If I hit control three or command three, if you're on Mac, you can now see the triplet form of your subdivisions. If I hit control four, by the way, you can go in slip mode where you're not even, you're not going to be locked into the grid. Basically that's your triplet 16ths right there. So now all of a sudden you could see all these MIDI notes look a little more, except for this one right here. We'll talk about that. Primarily when you're looking at, let's say we just mute everything else when we listen to these drums on their own, you're hearing a hi-hat, right? So those hi-hats are kind of paired up and they're hitting on the triplet 16ths. And it's kind of cool. So you can build some really funky beats with triplet subdivision. So I might start there. I'm going to add in like a ghost note, like a, a much lighter snare drum sample. So you could take a snare drum that sounds very soft, turn the volume down. And if we add that in, we're going to, we're going to have, essentially, we're going to be hearing basically a 16th, a triplet 16th kind of pattern, which is really funky sounding. It's very cool. It's going to sound kind of different to your ears. but it kind of ties together when you add in the kick. Notice that little skip that I do here in the middle. But otherwise the kick is landing. If I go back to regular 16th mode, right? I hit control three and go back to regular 16th subdivisions. You can see the kick, you know, it's basically landing at the start of these measures here. And there's a little skip moment I like to do right there. But besides that, it's sort of landing straight on. So it ties the ear down and then we add in the snares, which are happening right on a strong beat right here as well. It's interesting because sometimes a beat making like triplet subdivisions, dotted eighth note rhythms, shuffle, swing, six, eight time beats. There's a lot of different things that you can do with beat making that you might not have tried yet. And also, by the way, look at the velocities. So definitely taking advantage of everything, having a really specific velocity to give the beat a more human kind of feel. It's still going to feel static if it's just looping over and over again like this, but the velocity changes, the differences there really makes a difference, uh, making it sound more dynamic and interesting to the ear. It's very common too to hear drummers in real life, you know, playing a real drum kit, talk about triplets when they start to learn drum fills. So here we have an example of that in action. So right at the end of the phrase, it's hitting those triplets. And again, look, we're in our normal subdivision screen or, you know, 64th notes or 32nd notes or 16th notes, but these notes are not lining up to the grid. That's a telltale sign that if we go into triplet mode, remember control three or command three on Mac, you can now see those hits right on the triplet 16th note lines. It just gives things a very distinct feel. And I found that Whenever I've shown this to students, people learning beat making on a computer, they've never even heard of triplet subdivisions. They don't even know what that is. So, and a lot of the DAWs that people use, it's not necessarily like shown to you, like use triplets. You have to actually know to use that um, shortcut, at least in Ableton, right? To actually go into triplet mode on your screen. So a lot of people have never even made this style of beat. And again, here we go back to normal 16th note subdivisions. This pattern looks very strange. It's all cut away from the grid in the background. So a lot of music producers just never make this style of beat. You 
can also see when we zoom in, some of these hits are not really falling exactly to the grid. So I will sort of take little notes and just move them slightly off. A lot of times I move them slightly late um, to kind of push the beat a little bit, you know, away from the exact kind of click. So it just sounds more natural. That's another trick that I like to do. Another advantage I would say definitely to the style of beat making is using Ableton Live Drum Rack because you can see here the samples are preloaded and you get so many slots that you can actually utilize. But also when you're building something in MIDI like this, you can easily swap out the sounds. So here I'm using a drum rack. I've put together a lot of these samples and loops for my Patreon audience. You can download all this stuff down below. But you can see this is just one of different kits that I've kind of created and I can just easily swap this one out. So if I want to go for, let's say I'll try the lo-fi kit, I'll grab that and just drag and drop it on. To here, but I don't have to change my MIDI at all, so I can just audition different sounds and get just experiment with different things. You can see that different pattern using different samples really easily. And if I hit this button right here, I can easily swap it out with other kits that are loaded in. And again, these kits have their own, you know, samples already preloaded in the same slots, so it's really useful to just test different sounds out. Here we can just swap this one out with, let's say, Crunchy Kit. You can really start with the Ghost Snare and the Hi-Hat and play around with Triplet 16th to kind of build the basic idea. So here we have just a different pattern. Instead of having a pair of Hi-Hats, it goes straight from the Hi-Hat to the Ghost Snare note. So you can imagine you're looking at the triplet 16ths on the screen in your drum rack and you're just kind of creating some kind of alternating pattern, play around with the velocities maybe, make it sound natural, make it sound dynamic. And then I can throw in the kick drum. You can incorporate the toms and maybe a cymbal. So you can create really funky, interesting, different, maybe busy sounding groovy drum beats and do it really simply right and having a lot of control over the sound. It's really fun. And then musically speaking, when you're doing triplets, it also kind of lends itself to different musicality that's using triplets as well. So here I have some piano that's kind of following the drum beat. <laughs> Alright you guys, that's going to do it for me in this video. If you found this video interesting for your beat making, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe if you're new here. And if you want to download any of the samples or the loops or the drum sounds that I use in this video or the MIDI, uh, you can get all that down below. So I always put this stuff together and you can download it down there. And uh, yeah, let me know if you guys want me to do more videos about this. Like I said earlier, you have shuffle, swing beats, dotted eighth note rhythms. Uh, beats that use six, eight time signatures, three, four waltzes, all that kind of cool stuff. So there's a lot of cool stuff you might not have tried when it comes to beat making that can get you out of that kind of feeling of being stagnant with the same <laughs> exact kick snare patterns all the time, right? So yeah, I'd be happy to do more videos about it. If you want me to, just let me know and I'll see you all in the next one. And yeah, have fun making music.